Hey everyone, I'm excited to be here for the final video in the series to wrap up the NVH results for the motor mounts that I switched out because of course I put in the 034 street mounts in place of my leaking stock B7 mounts. I know it's been a little while since we spoke about motor mounts and there's been work done to the car. If you're a real detective you might notice a few things in the engine bay that are a little different since the last time I posted a video on this, but I promise that all the things that I've done in the meantime will have no impact on the NVH. The only tangible differences that our NVH results should capture is the fact that the motor mounts are of course solid now instead of partially hydraulic filled that the OEM mounts are. But as we found out in the previous video series, by the way, if you want to catch up on that, go check it out, was that the 034 mounts are a little bit taller than the OEM mounts. And that wasn't something that I was anticipating at all before. So the engine's actually sitting up a little bit higher than it was before. For me, what that meant was that the front snub mount had to be adjusted in the lower core support and the mount had to be moved up just for the snub mount to fit into it properly. So really, the factors are very limited and the motor mounts themselves should be the biggest contributing factor. So let's get on to test number one. That is Vibe Sensor. So what I did was same phone, same app, no case on it. I'm just going to put it right on the engine cover. Again, I know that might sound stupid, but the fact that I'm doing the exact same steps the same way should create the baseline last time that's still valid for my comparative results now. So what I'm going to do is run a log on here for about a minute and look at the data. All done. And you can see how long this has taken to do, but here are the two logs. Now I'll say right off the bat that I've been looking at these results for a little bit and I'm reminded that the art of data is really in the analysis and the interpretation. Originally, I was looking at a few metrics that may have not been uh, quite as wide as I should have been looking at, but let's look at this together and I hope you guys can help me interpret this and throw some information in the comment section of this video too. But what I originally cited when I was giving the baseline results was eight, and I should have spent more time familiarizing myself with the metrics being measured. This is using the accelerometer in the phone, but I basically said the baseline is eight. Um, kind of just drawing a line through the middle of this uh, blue graph, which represents Z. Um, Z is the axis where the phone is moving up and down, so that's the one that we're focusing on. Um, but let's look at a few other things that I've noticed here. First of all, the shape. So we know that there's a, a spike during startup that's to be expected, and we're kind of just looking at the thickness of the, the Z data here as it's fluctuating. Now, going back to vibration, which isn't something that I was looking at before, um, we get a feel for how much it's fluctuating, right? So it might spike up on the high end to around one or two. In the low end, it's also maybe negative two to three with really low spikes, maybe to negative four. But keep that picture in your mind here. Um, and the fact that the vibration on the Z axis goes to one, it hit its limit. So let's go to the new one. Now this tells an interesting story to me. So look at the difference of the shape in this graph. This does add another 11 seconds, so the graph does look skinnier naturally because the timeline's longer, but look how huge the first spike is. This one goes well past 10. It's moving on towards, well, on the size of this graph, 20. So the startup spike in vibration is much larger, but Remember that uh, shape of the blue z-axis we were looking at just earlier? Look how tight it is now. So we're only fluctuating, and again, I know there's a negative 5 in the middle on the last one, but what is that? 0 to negative 1? 1 and 1? You know, our fluctuation now on the vibration of the z-axis is only like 2 unit measurements. And here it is again. So maybe it's a little higher. I remember the baseline was 8. This is looking like it's maybe slightly more, maybe nine. We do see the big spike again, but look how tight it is, the pattern. And most notably, look at the, the upper limit Z, 0.71. So unless I'm interpreting this incorrectly, it looks as though the vibration has actually decreased. My running hypothesis right now is that the motor mounts, since they're solid, they might be taking all of that vibration and sucking it into the mounts themselves and then out through the drivetrain. Whereas before, the OEM mounts, especially because they were uh, leaking and loose, they may have been transferring much more vibration into the engine itself 
than these aftermarket stiffer mounts. On to the second test, the decibel reading inside of the cabin with the car running from startup for the same period of time. So again, same phone, I'm using the DB meter app and of course, I do expect to see a larger decibel reading than we got on our baseline, not only because they're solid mounts, but now with this new hypothesis about how the added vibration is being drawn through the drivetrain, I expect to see an even larger difference than I would have originally expected. Interesting results once again. So what you can see is that the average decibel reading was 44. And I'm actually not surprised in the sense that the first time I started up the car after putting in the mounts, I also noticed that there was much less noise than I anticipated, but we're literally talking the average difference of maybe one decibel. That's pretty cool. All right, enough with the testing. Let's go for a drive. So the car hasn't been on the street for a while. I've been doing a bunch of work and I have never driven it with the 034 motor mounts in. So let's go for a drive and I'll kind of let you know how it feels. shifts feel pretty solid. I'm trying to figure out how much more solid than before. It's been a while, but it does feel good. Yeah, yeah, there's a difference. Yeah, just driving around for a couple minutes now. It's not a mind-blowing change. It feels more solid. You gotta try to separate turbo leg from drivetrain movement to try to figure out how much difference the mounts really make. And I would say it's marginal but it does feel good. Just in that little jaunt around the neighborhood, it's good. I like these a lot, actually. There is a noticeable difference, for sure. Um, even in your, your arms and body, you can't really feel it. Um, there might be a little bit more vibration. If you remember to think about it, you might notice it, but it's not significant. Now that I'm back in the garage, I can say I have a new appreciation for all the guys out there doing automotive journalism for how well they can talk about what they're seeing and feeling while they're driving. That is not easy. With a little more concentration now, I can say that previously in a video I mentioned when I changed out the front snub mount to the 034 that I didn't feel any difference, and I stand by those words. But now that I have the motor mounts done as well, I think there's a bit of a cumulative effect going on. I wouldn't say it's just because of the motor mounts, and granted before one of my mounts was blown, so my previous example was quite bad. Now I do feel like there's a bit of a connectivity that feels different than before. I'm not going to say that the throttle response is that much better, or that I feel like power is being put to the ground better. I don't feel it's that dramatic of a difference, but I do feel more connected to the chassis of the car, and therefore the road. I still would say that this is a worthwhile replacement, and if you have any concerns about your engine mounts, just go for it. We've seen from the data that I collected that there really is no downside to this in terms of comfortability, and for me, this is one of those things where peace of mind goes a long way. What I'm really excited for is to build this cumulative effect because I have a rear sway bar that's ready to go in and a differential mount too, and that's when I think I'm going to see big value out of these changes. As always, thank you very much for watching, and if you have any comments about the way I did my testing, or if you think there's any other tests that I could do in the future to continue adding data to the conversation, please let me know in the comments. If you found value in this video and want to see more, please do subscribe and let me know what other types of things you'd like to see in the future. See you next time.